If you are thinking about buying the MacBook Air M2 but are having trouble deciding because there are a lot of MacBooks available to purchase now, there is one more to think about that is not even listed on the Apple website, and that is the MacBook Pro M1. Now this came out in November 2020. It has all the features of the MacBook Air performance-wise and a few extra things that you may not know about. To recap, the MacBook Air M2 has great new features like the MagSafe connector, a new updated FaceTime 1080p webcam, and full-size function keys at the top row of the keyboard. Now to go back to the MacBook Pro M1, it has two USB Thunderbolt ports on the side, no MagSafe, uh, old 720p webcam with no notch, and this has the old touch bar instead of a standard row of function keys. Now, I happen to like the touch bar. I can customize it with certain buttons that I use all the time, including the screenshot button, uh, keyboard brightness button, and a night shift button, something you can't do with the new M2 Air. Now, if you look at the profile of both these computers, the MacBook Air M2 and the MacBook Pro M1, they look nearly identical with the MacBook Air M2 being slightly thinner than the Pro M1. But if you put them side to side, they look about even with the MacBook Pro M1 being slightly tapered on the sides. Now putting these two displays side by side, they are also nearly identical with the new MacBook Air M2 having a 13.6 inch display and the MacBook Pro M1 having a 13.3 inch display. Now you can see here in full screen mode that you do get a bit more real estate with the Air M2 because of the thinner bezels and the new notch. Both these displays have nearly the same resolution, 2560 by 1664 for the Air M2 and 2560 by 1600 for the MacBook Pro M1. You can see on the right side, the Pro M1 has a slightly cooler image that I think looks better. For some reason, the Air M2 is a little bit warmer and the speakers on the Air M2 are definitely better with the new four speaker setup. You're not looking at the specs and you're just thinking you're buying the Air M2 because it's the next generation and it's going to perform better. It does in certain ways. Now, if you see the scrubbing on the Air M2, it is quicker and a little bit more granular than the M1, but that's where the differences stop. So in a five minute export to H.264, you aren't seeing much performance gains for the Air M2. It exported at six minutes and 45 seconds as opposed to the Pro M1 at six minutes and 54 seconds. In a back-to-back -back render, the MacBook Air M2 performed much worse than the Pro M1 exporting at 7 minutes and 12 seconds as opposed to the Pro M1 at 4 minutes and 10 seconds. Now that is because the M2 throttled way back without having a fan and the Pro M1's fans kicked into speed through the render. The MacBook Air M2 did perform better off a cold boot and that is rendering one file, not back to back. It exported at 4 minutes and 26 seconds. So the MacBook Pro M1 is definitely a better choice if you have a sustained workflow. Unfortunately, the MacBook Air M2 base model also has a slower SSD transfer rate due to it having a single 256GB NAND chip setup as opposed to the Pro M1, which has dual 128GB NAND SSDs. With the MacBook Air M2 starting at $1199, we suggest you go for the MacBook Pro M1, which is on sale at Best Buy for $999.99 with the link below or you can purchase a Apple refurbished unit for $10.59 at the Apple website. We suggest also staying away from the new MacBook Pro M2 because it uses a single NAND SSD setup like the Air M2 for slower SSD read and write speeds. And that is our comparison between the MacBook Air M2 versus the MacBook Pro M1. And for more news and reviews, head to news.punchjump.com.